Lee Daniels knows he has your attention, but now he wants you to take him seriously. You're watching Beyond the Trillers review of Lee Daniels, the butler. I am thrilled to be working with all of you over the next four years. Dr. King. What do your daddy do? He's a butler. Young brother, the black domestic play an important role in our history. Something special is going on down here, Dad. Lee Daniels, the butler? What's with the possessive title? Well, as you might have heard, just last month, Warner Brothers shocked Hollywood when the studio decided to pick a fight with none other than Harvey Weinstein over a technicality. Turns out that way back in 1916, Warner Brothers released a silent film called The Butler and went to the Motion Picture Association of America claiming audiences might mix the two up. Daniels, knowing that his film was on the eve of its Oscar run and that a last-minute title change could prove to be a fatal distraction, wrote a very personal open letter to Warner Brothers brand new CEO Kevin Sujihara, begging him to drop the claim. But nothing. Luckily, the Weinstein Company's lawyers are just as crafty as Warner Brothers, coming up with this last-minute possessive title. But didn't I just say that Lee Daniels isn't taken seriously? Will it hurt the butler to have his name literally plastered on it? And why Lee Daniels' name? He didn't write it. Instead, it was unbelievably Buffy's Jonathan Levinson who wrote it. Yes, actor-turned-writer Danny Strong turned heads with his scripts for HBO's political flicks Recount and Game Change, and next will script the two-part finale for The Hunger Games. And Lee Daniels wasn't even Harvey Weinstein's first choice to direct, landing the gig after Spike Lee turned it down and Harvey considered and then rejected the idea of Tyler Perry directing. But perhaps this is Lee Daniels the butler because this is his chance to prove himself. The cast has already proven itself, as this is a movie as star-studded as they come. From Cuba Gooding Jr. to Vanessa Redgrave to Mariah Carey to Lenny Kravitz to James Marsden to Alan Rickman and more. Forrest Whitaker already has his Oscar for 2006's The Last King of Scotland. And while Oprah is returning to the silver screen for the first time since 1998's Beloved, which is kind of a big deal, she was already nominated for The Color Purple back in 1986. And yes, Lee Daniels is no Oscar rookie himself. He produced Monsters Ball, which won Halle Berry her Oscar, and was nominated for both Best Director and Best Picture for 2009's Precious, which won Monique her Oscar, as well as the Best Adapted Screenplay Oscar for Jeffrey Fletcher. But alas, those aren't the only films Daniels has made. He also made 2004's The Woodsman, which focused on a child molester played by Kevin Bacon, which won little critical praise or even attention. The 2005 thriller Shadow Boxer with Helen Mirren and Cuba Gooding Jr., which failed to make even a million dollars at the box office. And most notoriously, The Paperboy last year, which was practically laughed off the screen at Cannes for what was perceived as over-the-top camp pulp. And in fact, the reaction to The Paperboy was so bad that it made it appear as if Daniels had ridden the coattails of hot-button issues to the top rather than having any actual artistic talent. To prove it's the latter, Daniels has removed his usual crutches of sexuality and violence, instead going mainstream. Indeed, there is no demographic less forgiving. So last year, I talked about how Quentin Tarantino really broke down barriers with Django Unchained, because uh, he made a film about slavery, which is something that Hollywood hasn't really done. Uh, you know, with the exception of Roots, which was a television film, while they've covered the Holocaust extensively, uh, the horrors of war, uh, you, you know, uh, rape in America, women's rights, uh, po politics. They've covered a ton of things, but Hollywood has never really addressed slavery in America. America has really not addressed it very much. Uh, so when Tarantino did that in, in a very powerful way, uh, everyone took notice because of that. It also was, it was a good film. But on that note, this year, you have a ton of films that deal with race relations. You've ha you had 42, uh, The Story of Jackie Robinson, Fruitvale Station, The Butler Now, and then later this year, 12 Years a Slave. Uh, and interestingly, a number of these films are from African-American directors. But with, with such an influx of films, it's no longer just you know, enough that they exist, but now the conversation starts to turn to which are the, which are the good ones. Uh, I will say, I thought 42 and Fruitvale Station were both very good. And when I came out of Fruitvale Station, I was like, wow, Oscar winner across the board. Harvey Weinstein sure has a winner here. But then while I was watching The Butler, I almost felt bad for Fruitvale Station because The Butler just completely steamrolls it. I mean, Fruitvale Station is a wonderful debut for Michael B. Jordan and Ryan Coogler, but this is like, these are the pros here. Like Lee Daniels and his amazing cast comes in here and they just really... You know, it's just, it's like a jug, it's an Oscar juggernaut. Uh, and, and I was fascinated by that. Let me start out by saying, I'm so impressed with Lee Daniels' ability to go mainstream. 
I was one of the few people who kind of saw, got what he was trying to do with the Paperboy. I liked the film. If you check out my review, I thought it had a lot of strong merits. I think he really did a great job capturing life in the South. I think Lee Daniels has a tremendous gift at, uh, you know, depicting the voices of the oppressed, be they, um, you know, you know, other, you know, non-white, you know, races, uh, women, uh, the poor. I think he's really good at that, and he does so in a really respectful way that you, it's, it's, it's unusual to see. Very honest. Uh, that's what I liked about The Paperboy, and I think he does that here. And he kept that emotional resonance, uh, which he's so good at, but yet he went so mainstream. I feel he must have watched The Help on a loop. I mean, this borrows a lot from The Help, but I feel is a lot better than The Help. Uh, it, which is interesting. I think he takes those what, what was done there and does an even better job because I felt that to me the help uh, was lacking a little bit dramatically. I thought you know it was a very fun film, uh, but the butler is able to be fun. I mean, even when I was watching it, I feel like the Weinstein's could have a franchise here. I could see this going on to be like a play or a musical. Uh, I, I really feel this film has like a long road ahead of it because it's just so well done and it's so, the backdrop of history is impressive. When, uh, when I reviewed the trailer, I said I felt that was a mistake to, to have the civil rights woven into the story because while this is based on a real life butler who worked at the White House, this is a fictional story. This is a fictionalized account that, that draws from the fact that that, kind of, that guy existed. Uh, but I think it's really well done. I think the trailer didn't really show how well it was interwoven, uh, the story of you know, Forrest Whitaker's character's service at the White House and his son's rebellion against racism in America. And it's just, it really works in the film. It, it, it's just really powerful, and that's what's so great about the film. It has fun moments, and then it has, it, hit, it really hits you, and then it lifts you back up. Uh, at, some, at some points, it does feel emotionally manipulative. Uh, I, I feel like this could play at a Disney theme park. It's so kind of that kind of film about America. Uh, and I think it would, be, it would go, along, it'd go across very well. And also sometimes it feels a little weird for them to bring up Barack Obama so strongly and so prominently. Uh, but of course, considering the story and the setting of the story, how can it not go there? It's clearly a very powerful, uh, it's a powerful tra uh, transition in history, you know, to see. So you know, obviously if you're going to talk about, uh, you know, the African Americans who worked, who, were, who worked in service at the White House, of course it's important that eventually uh, one was elected to serve in the White House as the president. How can, you, how can that not be addressed? Uh, and it's done, it's done well, but I think that, you know, I'd, to some degree it's hard to escape that, that sense of manipulation just a little bit. But still, very good, very well done. I really liked the film. Um, not only did I like the story, but I thought the performances were very powerful. I felt that Forrest Whitaker, I know he already has an Oscar for The uh, Last King of Scotland, but I think he has a really good shot at getting another nomination and perhaps a win here. The Academy loves when you can portray uh, a character through a long period of time, and his job of portraying um, his character from, the, from, the, from being a youth to very old is really impressive. Really, and that's what won Kate Winslet her Oscar for The Reader. And Forrest Whitaker, I think, does a much better job. Also, you know who else blew me away? Oprah. Oprah is fantastic in this film. She has really dark moments, and she has really natural light moments. She really plays the glue that holds her family together. Uh, and it's a wonderful depiction of a family, which is also really nice to see. Uh, and it, it was just, she was fantastic. I think she's also a shoe in for an Oscar nomination. I feel that a lot of people here could be. I think everyone did a nice job. I will say, sometimes the celebrity cameos, some people laughed because they just, they just came out of nowhere. It was such a, it was such an unending, um, sprawl of celebrities. They just, there's a celebrity. Oh, there's, there's John Cusack as Nixon. There, you know, and that was the one that got the biggest laugh, actually. But I have to say, I thought John Cusack did an interesting job with his portrayal as Nixon. I think I liked what he did with it. I thought it was interesting, and it was, I think, effective. I mean, none of the celebrity uh, actors playing the presidents are particularly as powerful as, you know, the core cast that are portraying, you know, Forrest Whitaker and his family. Uh, they're more caricature playing the presidents, but they get the job done. And I, I think it re it's, it's, it's the fun part. And I keep bringing up fun, and you might think, well, this is a dark story. How can it be fun? It's an uplifting story with fun moments. And that's the brilliance of the butler. I feel the butler is not only engineered right up, you know, when I watched the King's Speech, I was like, wow, this is just made to win Oscars. And when I watched the butler, I felt the same way. But I also feel it's made to appeal to all audiences across the board, multiple demographics, and I feel the butler could be a surprise box office hit. Uh, I, I, this might be a slow burn for this film. People might have to discover it. 
Uh, and it also, I'm sure, will gain momentum as it gets more and more nominations. But I urge you to go and see it right away so that you can be on, you can be on board right at the beginning uh, and be like, oh, what, the butler? I knew, I knew that was going to be big. I saw it. I didn't, I didn't have to be told to see it. Um, so I, I, was, I was surprised. I was not expecting much. I actually saw two movies that day when I went to see it for screenings, and this was the second one, and I, I was like, oh man, is this just going to be like propaganda? And I was just really impressed. It was really masterful filmmaking. I, I really loved it. It's one of my favorite films of the year. So sorry, Fruitvale Station. I'm sure you're going to get nominated, but I think but The Butler is going to be hard to beat for anyone. And if I was 12 years a slave, Oh, I'd be nervous. This is good stuff. So congrats to Lee Daniels for, you know, sticking in there and doing a great job. I hope that he gets the respect he deserves for, for such a 180 creatively. And Forrest Whitaker and Oprah, um, I'm sure we'll see you at the Oscars. So have you seen The Butler? Uh, what do you think of this complex yet very commercial story? Write your thoughts down below. Uh, thank you for checking out my review, and I hope you'll check out these other videos. Bye.